want a bread o' roti toast, but they weren't too expensive? Well, in this tutorial, I'll teach you how to make your own. So, for this plush, you will need the template, which you can download in the down bar, a cream colored felt, a caramel colored felt, which this is actually called um, copper crayon, a thread that matches this color, and a needle and a pair of scissors. You can actually use a uh, tan color or a dark brown color in exchange for this, but I think these colors um, matched the original Rody Toast the best. You will also need some stuffing. I use polyfill, some cream thread, but this is optional, and some pins, and this is also optional. First thing you want to do is cut out one of the long strips and one of the bottom template in the caramel color, in the dark color, and then you want to cut out two of the toast pieces and four of the half toast pieces in the cream color. Here's all the pieces cut out, and don't forget to cut out the center line pieces. For this, all you have to do is fold it in half with your template and take your scissors and cut directly through the template. It may be a little tough but you can get it. So there's one and you do the other. The next thing you want to do is embroider the face onto one of the ends of toast. You can do both ends if you'd like, but on the original Rody Toast there's only one face. So um, there's different faces to choose from. But this crazy face, which kind of looks like Domo, is the face I'm going to do. So thread your needle with the color embroidery floss that matches your brown. And embroidery floss is actually six uh, strands of thread together. So if you don't have any, you can make your own with just thread. So here is what the final embroidery looks like. And if you are too lazy to take the time to embroider it all, you, depending on what face you pick, you can um, just cut the pieces out in felt and felt stitch them on, or you can even um, use fabric paint like scribbles and just draw it on, but that takes extra time for drying. So, yeah, next step is to take the two sets of half toast and sew the bottom ends shut just this area here. Um, the easiest to do would be a blanket stitch, which is what I'm going to do, but to keep it super secure and from for you not to be able to see the stitches when it opens is to do a back stitch all the way across the edge, but you need to allow for a seam allowance, which means you need a little extra space. But um, like I said, I'm just gonna do a blanket stitch and I'll show you what it looks like after that. So this is what they look like, and I decided to use a cream colored thread that I had laying around because um, if you do decide to use the uh, blanket method like I did, you might be able to see the stitches through. So when you do the stitches, try to make them even not one longer than the other because when you open it, the inside, um, you will see them, and it's kind of weird if you make one longer than the other. So, that's what these two pieces look like. And the next step you want to do is take your long piece with the two slits, and you want to attach these two half slice pieces on the inside. So, you'll want to take one one end and sew it to this side and one end and sew it to that side and then repeat the process for the other slit. So you can either start from 
one corner and go all the way across or you can start from the middle of this by folding it in half and find the middle of this by folding it in half and start from the middle and go one side and then do the other to make sure that they are evenly spaced. So I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. So this part is a bit uh, fiddly as my dear Tammy likes to put it. So I'm going to show you how to do it in case you're having um, problems or struggles with it. So this is what one side looks like um, done. And it opens like that. So you can see the inside and that's where you put the card or photo or whatever. So the first thing, like I said before, is um, I'm going to try and center it. So I'm going to fold it in half and that's where the half mark is. Set that aside. Then take this and, um, oh, what side's the fat side? That side's the fatter side. So, that side's the fatter side. So, fold it in half. Find the center by lining this up. You find the center. There's the center and the center is there so meh the center is there and there and you just line them up and then take a pin and pin it to secure it insert it all the way so you take your needle with your thread and it is two thread thickness and you start in one corner of the brown and just poke it through until it's secure and then you get the very corner of the bread piece and line it up and then you start your blanket stitch. Like that. And just keep going until you get to this curve point. When you get to this curve point, you want to move the brown to the white, like that. So instead of it being like that, you want to move it because it is curve shaped. So you want to curve the brown to the shape of the cream color. And I like doing um, lots of small stitches. It takes a lot of extra time but I think it's worth it because it looks good and it's more durable than a bunch of wider space stitches. So once we get to this point we want to move the brown back to the curve so it meets up. And as you can tell already, that it will be even with the corner. So um, I'm just going to go all the way to the corner and then I'll show you what to do after then. So we've just gotten past the large curve part and we're back to another indent. So what you want to do, like before, is move the brown towards the cream so they meet up. Yeah, this part sticks out, but we'll fix that when we get to it. So, we just carry on with our stitches. And then, we move the brown back over to where the white meets up and then finish our stitches and we want to try and make the part where we sewed the two pieces together meet up to the slit end of the slit so line that up like that
and like that and go through it move on to the other side and then continue on doing the other side. So we do not need to find the middle and pin because we have already lined up this side so this side should be perfect for lining up. So we just continue on all the way around and then I'll show you how to end on this side. So now we're getting towards the end and this part's slightly difficult because of such the tight space and all the curves and stuff. So like before you just want to keep stitching and curving the brown around the white piece. As you can see, there's this again. So like we did before, we just keep going and we move the brown to the white. Like that. You, you want to bend it and you can move this See if you put tug it on that and tug that way. You just tug it and it'll get to where you want it to be. And at mostly at this point I just push my finger on it and it does it. And then we move it again. And we just want to finish this off. So, once we get to this point where we're pretty much even on both sides, we just want to go back through the middle stitching where the two parts join and stitch a few pieces there and where the slit is and then we want to go back through the other part that we already stitched on to try and seal it up and then what I like to do is since our blanket stitching faces this way go back through this way And tighten it off with a felt stitch loop and then go back through this way right there and go through the back and tie it off like that So, our top piece of the bun is done. Our next step is to, oops, there. Our next step is to sew on the front and the back toast panel onto each of these sides. And you'll have to repeat the, um, process where you have to move the brown into the white which is time consuming but it gives it a great toast shape. So I'll show you what it looks like after I'm done. So this is what it looks like and I got a little extra on the end right here but it's even right there so it'll all work out when I sew the bottom panel on. And this is what it looks like from the top. And the next thing to do is to stuff it, at least halfway, because we want to make sure we get in between these little slits. So 
you don't want to overstuff it, but you want to fill it up. Because overstuffing it will make it do that. You don't want to do that. You want them to stay closed and not be forced open. And I think the best way to do that is to roll your polyfill so it fits in between the pockets. Like that. Maybe a little more in the middle one. All right, next step is to sew on the, the bottom panel like that. So I'm going to start on the front or even over here. So my end stitching ends back here. So I'm gonna do three sides and then stuff the rest. Okay, so we're now to the point where we need to finish stuffing it and sewing up the end and we're done. So, um, you just want to stuff it, and I like using scrap pieces sometimes too to stuff it. As long as you can't see th the colors through it, then it should be fine. So, um, another way of recycling is just to use your scrap pieces instead of throwing them out. And you just want to stuff the rest of it full. But don't make it too stuffed. You don't want it to be bulging. Maybe need a little more and then finish blanket stitching across the end and tie it off in a corner so no one can see the knot. And we're done with our little roti toast. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. See you guys later. And then take a your needle and this is two thread lengths. Jack! Jack! <whistles> stop drinking. Thank you. My body drinking. Um